Hi everyone, I am Joe Mazzalotti. I'm a Turbo Native expert, and this is a deep dive into an open source app that I built called Daily Log. It's a Ruby on Rails website and a Turbo Native iOS app. The topic for today will be authentication, a hand rolled concern that we're using, and then how it all lines up with the iOS app. So, Daily Log is available at dailylog.ing. This is what it look, looks like. And then also you can check out the source code by clicking that link, it, it all on GitHub. So everything that I'm gonna be talking through today will be available as open source on GitHub. I definitely encourage you to check it out. So I'm gonna pull open my, I have the server running. So I'm gonna open up localhost here and I'm gonna sign in with get started. I have user at example.com in a seed along with password. You can see this is a Tailwind CSS styled screen and then a sign in button that then takes us to our day. So I recorded this on December 20th. So you're seeing December 20th. Uh, I can add exercise, medication, supplements, water, and food. So this, I just had some crackers. So I could add some food here and hit save and then it shows up like that. Or I could add maybe a 24 ounces of water. And it's kind of a simple way to manage your important metrics of the day. I like to use it to, at the end of the day to see like if I've eaten, drank enough water or if I've eaten healthy enough, if I should have dessert or not. Um, it's been pretty helpful. So how it all works authentication wise is this is the Rails app. We have app controllers concerns authentication. So this is an authentication concern that gets mixed in with all of our controllers when we include it. So if I open the application controller, you'll see that here we include authentication. And the authentication concern is only 42 lines of code. Uh, and it exposes a couple of methods. It exposes sign in, sign out, and then authenticate user explanation point, you know, bang, uh, redirect if authenticated. All of these things are helpful to use in our controllers. Uh, we also have access to current user and user signed in, which we can also check out in our view by exposing them via helper method. Uh, what this gives us is a really solid framework or ground to build upon. It's not complicated. There's not a lot going on, uh, but it does do what we need. So at a high level, we have our sessions controller, right? And our sessions controller has a create method where we grab that user and authenticate by authentication params. This is coming from Rails 7.1, the new thing where we have using bcrypt under the hood and we can authenticate them by their password digest. So if you look at our migration, our schema file, we look at our users table, we have them have an email and a password digest. So when they create their password, it will be encrypted for us and we don't have to worry about you know, messing with that or ever seeing it. And then we can use authenticate by to do a time based uh, attack, not proof, but resistant check to see if that user was authenticated. If we get a user out of that, we sign them in and we redirect to essentially the homepage. And that sign in method is going to set current user. Current is a active support current attributes. It's essentially a way to access anything globally across our app. I'm only currently using it in this single file. So here we actually could have just used the IVAR because we're never actually referencing this user outside of this module, but I like to keep it here in case we want to in the future, you know, use that in our controller or somewhere else in a different controller or, or model or, or the view or something. So I like to keep it there. It just kind of separates who's holding on to it. Our application controller has that before action for authenticate user, right? Which is coming from authentication module. If the current user is blank, we are redirecting to the session, the new session path, hey, you gotta sign in, and we tell them you need to sign in to continue. Current user is coming from as an exposed helper method, and we set current user by first trying to grab it from our current attributes Otherwise, we authenticate the user from the session. We're authenticating the user from the session. We're really grabbing them from the cookies. So this probably could be renamed to cookies, but session just made a little bit more sense in my mind. 
Uh, we find the user by their ID uh, that we stored in the encrypted cookies. So how did it get in there? When we signed the user in up here, we set that user ID in the encrypted cookies. I'll talk about permanent in a minute when we move on to iOS. But this feels silly, right? Like we're just setting the user ID in cookies. What if they were to change them? So let's get rid of encrypted for a minute and just do cookies.permanent. When I sign the user in here, we're going to sign out. And user at example. And before I do that, I'm actually going to go into our storage and we're going to go and we're delete both of our cookies and we're going to sign in. Delete my C-surf. <laughs> we're going to sign in here. And oh, um, so we can delete them down here as well. So we just want to use the straight cookies, not encrypted anywhere. Okay, so we're signed in. I refresh the page. We now have user ID and a value. The user could just set this to two and then they would sign in as user two. That user doesn't exist, so we're getting bounced out. But if user two existed, they would have just gained access to their account. I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna undo these two changes to set the cookies on the encrypted keyword userexample.com, password. And now when I refresh the page, you'll see that user ID has a value of something that we can't interpret. If we try to change this to one and refresh the page, we can't sign in. So this is a really nice way of kind of obfuscating and keeping secure the user that is signed in without, while still just exposing the key as a standard cookie. If you look at cookies, the cookies API on Rails, you'll see here that we can have some more documentation on encrypted. Remember, it's signed by your app's secret key base, so you'll need to have that set for it to work. So now that we're signed in, uh, how does it work on the iOS app? What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna get rid of permanent for a minute. And we're gonna run the iOS app. And you'll see here that we're already signed in, so we're just gonna sign out, we're gonna refresh the page, to make sure we haven't done anything, and then we're gonna kill and restart the app. Fresh start. So we see the home screen again, we hit get started, we click sign in, user at example.com, and we sign in, everything's working great. We can refresh the page, we can click at exercise. If I stop the app and run it again, we're no longer signed in. If I change that back to encrypted.permanent, you'll see here that we now, after we sign in and set that permanent cookie, we're signed in, kill the app, start it over one more time, and we remain signed in. So that permanent cookie, where is that coming from? Dot permanent sets of permanent quotes, which expires 20 years from now. In all effects and purposes, you know, that is permanent, right? So if I look at that user ID, it's going to expire on January 23rd, 2025. I think that this is a bug in the documentation or a, a typo in the documentation or a bug in Rails that hasn't been updated, but it's actually only for two years, not 20. I don't care, <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Uh, two years or 20 years, that is long enough for someone to remain signed in permanently for, for my apps. Um, but you can just set that yourself. All it's doing is setting an expires for you automatically. Really, really helpful. So we have that cookies.encrypted.permanent. We're now signing the user in, but how does the iOS handle that? How does the iOS app know to stay signed in and, and actually just work with all of that authentication? Well, this is almost the entire app code base right here, this entire scene delegate file. There's nothing around authentication or anything related to our stack. What's going on is that we're using our existing cookies that already exist on the web view to authenticate the user in our web processes. Turbo Native wraps a web view. There's no native authentication. There's no anything we have to worry about. These are all web screens. 
I really like this approach because it simplifies our stack immensely. We have no JSON endpoint to authenticate the user. We have no need to do anything that's custom to the Turbo Native app outside of our web view authentication. The only special thing that's in place is when I click get started, it knows to present this as a modal. And all that is handled in our configurations controller. Here is the path configuration for our iOS app. We have some patterns here that say when a URL ends in new, present it as a modal. Turbo Navigator takes over and uses that configuration to present our sign-in screen and our registration screen as a nice little modal. Now, you might notice that there's a nice uh, sign-in button and a register button up there. Those are part of Strata. We will get into that in the next session. But hopefully this gives a good understanding of how quick we can get authentication up and running for both our Rails app and for our Turbo Native app without really cutting many corners. The downside is that we don't have any uh, registration email confirmation in this. That is not included here or reset password, but with the new stuff in Rails 7.1, that shouldn't be too difficult to add. This is a great place to get started and kind of get a feel for rolling your own off and integrating with Turbo Native. Again, I'm Joe Mazzolotti. I blog about Turbo Native and Rails stuff all the time on Mazzolotti.com. And I have a weekly newsletter that's, that's catered to exactly this type of stuff. Talk soon.